there are a couple of new cancer drugs coming and I wanted to find a way to share the information about them with my colleagues. So this is my quick guide to palbocyclib and ribocyclib for pharmacists. Palbocyclib and ribocyclib are cyclin-dependent kinase 4 and 6 inhibitors. They are chemically very similar. If you didn't study pharmacology in the last two or three years, you probably don't know much about cyclin-dependent kinases. So here's a quick beginner's guide. In a healthy cell, cells are prevented from entering the cell cycle by a complex of E2F and the retinoblastoma protein. The E2F retinoblastoma complex is a tumour suppressor. Cell division is triggered, for instance, by oestrogen activating the oestrogen receptor, causing stimulation of cyclin D. Cyclin D forms a complex with cyclin-dependent kinase 4 and 6. This complex causes the retinoblastoma protein in the E2F blastoma complex to become hyperphosphorylated and released. This has three effects. Firstly, the loss of the suppression by the E2F blastoma complex, but E2F is actually an oncogene promoting cell division in itself. And the hyperphosphorylated retinal blastoma protein is also an oncogene further promoting cell division. Oestrogen receptors are overexpressed on over 60% of metastatic breast cancers. Blocking oestrogen has been used for a number of years as a first line treatment in these patients. However, blocking cyclin-dependent kinases in addition to oestrogen offers a potential new therapeutic target, restoring the E2F retinoblastoma complex and so reactivating the cell cycle's restriction point. So how effective are they? Well, the Paloma 2 trial randomised 666 patients with newly diagnosed oestrogen receptor positive metastatic breast cancer in a 2 to 1 ratio to palbocyclib or placebo. Taken for 21 days on a 28 day cycle, both arms received continuous letrozole at the normal dose. While the Mona Lisa 2 trial had almost an identical design to Paloma 2 but used a 1 to 1 randomization instead of the 2 to 1 randomization. It randomised patients on the same 3 week on, 1 week off schedule, this time using the competitor drug ribocyclib. Patients also received letrozole throughout. Both trials treated until disease progression. This prolonged duration on treatment means most pharmacists are likely to see someone on treatment with these agents. Both trials published their results in November 2016 in the New England Journal of Medicine. New England Journal of Medicine produced some very nice quick take videos that explain the trial in more detail. If you want to know more, visit nejm.org. Paloma 2 demonstrated a 35% reduction in risk of disease progression for palbocyclib and Mona Lisa 2 demonstrated a 44% reduction in risk of progression. Both trials met their predefined statistical endpoints and increased the median time to progression from around 14 months to at least 22 months. No head-to-head -head trials of the two drugs have been performed. Overall survival was a secondary outcome in both trials However, as most of these patients will proceed to standard chemotherapy after disease progression and there are multiple lines of chemotherapy for breast cancer, survival improvements are unlikely to be seen for a number of years. With all cancer treatment, there's always a balance between efficacy and toxicity. On the whole, both palbocyclib and ribocyclib are well tolerated. While considered targeted treatments, grade 3 and 4 haematological toxicity was more commonly seen than with most targeted treatments. With around half to two thirds of patients experiencing significant neutropenia. Interestingly, this seems to rarely result in febrile neutropenia, although there is a slight increase in rates of infection. Other common side effects included fatigue. With around a third of patients experiencing fatigue on the palbocyclib and ribocyclib arms and about 10 percentage points less experiencing fatigue on the placebo and letrozole arms. Up to half of patients on palbocyclib and ribocyclib experienced nausea in trials compared with about a quarter of patients on the placebo and letrozole arms. 
and alopecia, although usually grade 1, was present in up to a third of patients compared with about a sixth of patients on letrozole alone. Palbociclib is taken as a single 125mg capsule with food. Ribocyclib is taken as three 200mg tablets. It doesn't matter whether you take it with food or not. Both are taken once daily for three weeks, followed by a seven-day rest period. All patients take 2.5mg of letrozole for the full 28 days of the cycle. Dose reductions are necessary and for palbociclib these are in increments of 25mg. Pfizer makes 75mg and 100mg capsules to enable this. Dose reductions mid-cycle would be a problem with this, however usually this would not be necessary as low neutrophils normally require an interruption to treatment rather than a dose reduction mid-cycle. Ribocyclib is reduced by taking two 200mg capsules to get a 400mg dose, or one 200mg capsule to get a 200mg dose. Again, dose reductions are not normally made mid-cycle. Intensive monitoring is required for the first two cycles, with full blood counts on day 1 and 15 of the cycle for both ribocyclib and palbociclib. In addition, ribocyclib required ECG monitoring to check for QTC interval prolongation during the first cycle. Novartis recommends using the Fridericia formula to correct the QT interval rather than the Bazitz formula that's most commonly used in the NHS. After the first two months, full blood count monitoring can reduce to monthly and after six months a further reduction in monitoring may be acceptable for some patients. As with many of the targeted anti-cancer treatments, drug-drug interactions will pose a challenge. CYP3A4 interactions are likely as these drugs are metabolised by the CYP3A pathway. Interactions may also exist with the PGP pathway affecting drugs such as digoxin and dabigatran, and interactions may also exist with metformin and some statins. And of course both drugs may increase QTC interval and so co-prescribing with other QTC prolonging drugs may be an issue. This means palbociclib needs to be on the radar of generalist prescribers and pharmacists as well as specialists. Remember, palbociclib will not be prescribed by GPs so will not appear on the summary care record or produce alerts on GPs computerised prescribing systems or community pharmacies PMRs. Both drugs have list prices of just under £3,000 per month and so funding within the NHS was always going to present a challenge. The National Institute for Clinical Excellence has just reviewed both drugs and from November 2017 both drugs will become available in England, initially via the Cancer Drugs Fund and then through NHS England. Scotland will review palbociclib in December and ribociclib in 2018 and Wales will also review their use shortly. In England, blue tech forms will be required both for the CDF and for use within the NHS after the CDF. Both drugs will be available to the NHS through a confidential discount. That kind of rounds up my summary of this new class of drug. I hope it was helpful.